We have a T-slot in our part here. And first I want to take an end mill and rough through the center of the slot. To do that, I'm going to create a line that joins the midpoint of this line to the midpoint of this line. So I can tell the tool to follow that line exactly. I want to make that line in a different color than everything else. So I'm going to click to change the wireframe color. I'll set it to red number 12. Accept that selection. I'm going to create a line from endpoints. I'll go from the midpoint of this line to the midpoint of this line and accept that. Look at my part isometrically. Now I want to use the contour toolpath to rough this out. So I'm going to select toolpaths contour, switch to construction plane chaining and chain a single entity. And I'll just chain the red line. When I click on this end, this is the direction the cutter will travel. That's what I want. The solid jaw on my vise is over here. And we want to keep in mind when we do a slot like this, we're climb milling on one side of the cutter and conventional on the other. I'm going to accept that selection. To create, to choose my tool, sorry, I'm going to go into select tool library, into the filter, and I'm going to tell it none. I want a flat bottom end mill. I'm going to have it show me all tools that are less than the slot width. And I don't recall what the slot width is, so I'll right click in the size field and choose the distance between two points. And I'll analyze this distance to find out it's 3 8. So I'll accept these selections. Here are all my available tools that are less than 3 8. Because of the way I'm going to cut this slot, climb milling on one side of the cutter and conventional on the other, it will go a little crooked and deflect. So I want to make sure I leave a minimum of a 64th on each wall to be cleaned up. So 5 16th cutter will ensure that. So I'll choose my 5 16th end mill and accept that selection. If I've already got one, well I want a new one, then I'll say yes. If not, I'll use the existing one. So I'll use my existing 5 16 end mill that I've used for a different operation. Set up my speeds and feeds. So just enter the cutting speed I want to use. And my feed per tooth. I'll turn on the rapid retract. I won't worry about the plunge rate because I'm going to cut from outside the material. So I'm not plunging. We'll add a comment with the caps lock on. I'm just going to add a simple comment that I'm roughing the T-slot. In the cut parameters for compensation type, we want to turn it off. This will force the center of the cutter to follow the path. I'm going to leave 25 thou on the bottom of the slot for the next tool to clean up. I'll turn on depth cuts and I'll just use the radius of the cutter. So if you don't recall what that is, the cutter here is 5 16 If I go back to depth cuts, I'll put in the radius of the cutter, so 5 slash 32 as my depth cuts. I don't want to turn keep tool down on because as I go through the slot if I keep the tool down it's going to wrap it back through the part. Lead in and lead out I'll accept the defaults they should be fine. I don't want to break through so I'll uncheck it. I don't want multi passes and I'll have a look at my linking parameters. I prefer them in absolute coordinates so we can see the bottom of the slot is 376 deep, top, top of stock is zero. Feed plane I prefer at 100 thou, and I'm happy with these settings. And I'll turn the coolant on. I'll say OK, and we can see our cut path. I want to verify this, so I'll click the verify button. And when I verify it, I didn't bother to verify the operations where I take the end off, I'm just doing this one. I want to watch that only the material I want removed is removed. So I'll click play and we're good. We haven't hit the part anywhere. We can see there's material on each side to clean up. I'll close my verify window. So now I want to add a finish tool path. First I'm going to hide the cut lines. So I'll click this. And for the finish tool path I'm just going to run my cutter along each edge. Or I could take a 3 8 cutter and run right through the middle again. It's up to you, whatever you want. I'll add a new contour tool path. So tool paths, contour, construction plane chaining. I'm going to run the cutter along 
each side rather than a 3 8 through the center. So I'll do single chaining. Now I don't have geometry that I can follow at the appropriate depth. So it really won't matter if I choose this line or this line, I'll have to change the depth and the linking parameters. So I'll choose this line going in this direction and this line going in this direction. Accept my selections. Go back to tool. This time I do want to use another 516 sand mill, so back into the library. I'll grab a new 516. It's going to warn me there's a duplicate. Yes, I want to add another. And once again, I'll set up the cutting speed and the feed I wish to use. So for finishing, I'll go 7th hour per rev. And I'll add a comment. And I want to finish the T slot. And I'll make a note that it's the 3 8 width, not the actual T slot itself. So for cut parameters, we want the compensation on. I can turn it on in this computer or I can use controls. So the controls at the machine and there's a G41 or 42 added to the code. I prefer at the control. I don't want to leave anything on the bottom or do I? Because I'm going to put a T-slot cutter through here. So I may want to leave a little bit on the bottom so it cuts all across the bottom. And if I don't leave anything on the bottom the setup person has to be that much more accurate so that this tool doesn't go a hair deeper than the T-slot cutter. So I'll have it take a little bit of material here. I'll just leave 15 thou on the bottom. I don't need depth cuts. Again, I'll accept the default lead in and lead out. I don't want to break through or multi-passes. And in my linking parameters, I need to grab my depth. So I'll click the depth button. Click on an entity that's at the appropriate depth. And I can turn my coolant on and I can accept that. The magenta line shows the program cutter path because we're using cutter comp. The blue line shows the projected path of the center of the cutter. So this time I'll select all my operations and verify them. I click play. The first thing we do is clean up the ends, rough our T-slot, and what happened here? Well, let's go back to our master cam. The reason we're cutting on the wrong side, we look at the top view here, we'll see it clearer, right, is our cutter comp. So we'll go back into the parameters, and I have right when I should have left. Not a problem, I did want to climb mill, I'll say OK. Regenerate this toolpath, go back to my isometric view, and verify it one more time. Now I'm happy with this cut. I can go on and I can take my T-slot cutter and cut the T-slot. So I'll close the verify window and I'll save my work.